Amen. I'll stop right there. I want to talk about the Great Commission. All right. Amen. 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 The Great Commission. Come on, Amen. The Great Commission. This is the, the, the mandate, a divine mandate that God has given the church. Amen. To go. Amen. The church ought to go. Amen. Rick Warren, one of the most prominent pastors amen, in California, he pastors the Saddleback Church in Great Lakes, California. And he authored two books, one of which is entitled The Purpose Driven Church and The Purpose Driven Life. Rick Warren in The Purpose Driven Church book, he talks about a sermon that he preached one Sunday morning on evangelism. All right. And he said that particular morning, after the benediction, he said there was one, of, one member of his who decided to stay at church that morning after everybody had gone. Walked down the aisle, and he comes to the altar, and he began to pray a prayer on this altar. He prayed and said, Lord, if you want me to be a witness to someone today, Please give me a sign who it is. And because of his hunger and his thirst for lost souls, God heard and answered his prayer. One day while he was walking through the city parks, he sat down on one of the benches, and as he sat down on one of the benches, here come a husky, rough-looking fella who sat down right beside him. Because of his size and his roughness, he said that he decided to stand up and walk away. But as he stood up and was about to walk away, this fellow who was huge and he was husky and he was rough looking, he began to cry out in a very pitiful voice. He cried out and said, my life is miserable. I'm a lost man. I need to be saved. I need to know Jesus. I need Jesus for myself. I need to know him in the pardon of my sin. Somebody help me. Somebody please help me. I need to be saved. And this fellow, he decided to get off the bench, walk away, and he decided, I mean, as he turned to walk away, this fellow who was rough, tough, and husky looking, he grabbed him by his arm. And he said, Mr., he said, I need somebody to help me. He said, can you help me? I need to know Jesus. And as he pleaded desperately, this fellow began to pray another prayer. He said, Lord, I thank you. He said, for this man is a sign for me to be a witness. And when I thought about Amen. This fellow who had prayed for lost souls. I thought about the great commission that God had given the church. I thought about the many of individuals who are around us in our everyday life. Amen. Just like this husky, brood-looking fellow who needed to know Jesus. But I thought about, my brothers and sisters, the great commission had become our great omission. Amen. There are many people around us who are lost. There are many people around us, my brothers and sisters, who are dying. They are dying literally. They are dying and they are going to hell. But what I found out about it is that the church is too afraid to get involved. And this is what Jesus is calling our attention to today. This Gospel of Matthews here where Jesus present to us this great challenge, and that is to go. I think today, my brothers and sisters, we are to go. We are to go because the heart of the commission that Jesus has given upon us is in one word, and that one word is go. Amen. It's go. You can't spell gospel unless you spell go. And we need to go, my brothers and sisters, because as I listen close enough, I can hear the cries of men, women, boys, and girls crying out, somebody help me. 
I need to know Jesus. I need to know him in the pardon of my sins. And Jesus issued to us this great challenge. Amen. For us to go in all the world. But in our going, my brothers and sisters, we need to keep in mind that there are at least five things that we need to know about God. As we go, therefore, go, therefore. When he said go, therefore, the word therefore, and someone may ask, what is therefore, therefore? Therefore is there, amen, to command us, amen, to go in all the world, to go where men, women, boys, and girls are literally dying and on their way to hell. Amen. Right here, amen, in Sunnyside, Texas, amen, right here in the city of Houston, we got people, you understand, are on their way to hell, and some of them are in our family. Amen. And I'm wondering today, are we concerned? Amen. About the laws. Amen. Who on their way. Amen. To hell. The, the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 5, he said, Hell is being enlarged. In other words, a lot of folks, you understand, are on their way to hell. But I come to tell you, the church can boycott. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 4 and 5. We can boycott it. We can boycott it by taking the word of God to tell men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, amen, we ought to take Jesus, amen, to the streets because that's what Jesus did. Jesus never, amen, found himself in church every Sunday morning. Jesus was a street preacher. Amen. I tell you, Jesus never saw a man that he could not restore. He never saw a man lost that he could not save. He never saw a sinner, amen, and didn't change his life. He never saw a sick person that he could not heal. He never saw a man bound that he could not deliver. He never met a man captive that he could not set free. He never saw a man blind that he could not restore his sight. I come to tell you, Jesus came to turn things around. And it is our, it is our job as a hurry. Amen. To help Jesus turn things around. That was Jesus' mission, but he commissioned us to go in all the world. Amen. Go, which is interpreted as you go. The church has been given this great commission, and we ought to go. We ought to go with purpose. And the first thing that we need to know as we go, one is that we ought to exalt the Savior. I heard Jesus say, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. And I come to tell you, men need to be drawn today. They need to be drawn today. Men need to be drawn today because they're lost. And they need to be drawn. So as we go, my brothers and sisters, we need to exalt Jesus. And then secondly, we need to evangelize the lost. Uh -huh. We need to let them know that there is another way. You see, man, one day was on the hell-bound train. Uh, he had a ticket. It was a one-way ticket. And he was on his way to hell with no God on his side. But uh, I tell you what happened uh, out on a hill called Calvary. The hell-bound train had a head-on collision with an old rugged cross. No longer do we have to go to hell, but uh, we can go to heaven because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So as we go, we need to exalt the Savior. But well, we need to evangelize the lost. And then we need to express God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 